Hey guys, how's it going? Like Butter here. Welcome back to another division video. Now, this is a video that I wanted to make um, a couple of weeks ago when 1.6.1 came out. I wanted to give my opinions about uh, where the current state of like seeker minds are, um, because that's been you know a huge, huge discussion in the community. A lot of people think that seeker minds are super OP broken. Uh, some people don't think they're a problem at all. I personally don't think they're a problem. I think they're very, very annoying to deal with. And uh, when you come up against a group in Last Stand that is spamming Seeker Minds, it can be very frustrating. But today, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks on how to counter Seeker Minds and kind of give you a edge on your opponent if they are using that bloody little one-shot ball that rolls around. Now, in order for the Seeker to one-shot, we uh, did a couple of weeks ago, um, we did a test that showed that in order for a Seeker to one-shot you, it needs to directly hit you with all three flares. If you guys don't know, the Seeker Mines kind of break into a cone uh, AOE, which is area of effect. And if you get hit by all three of those projectiles, you take max damage. And that max damage that you do take, um, it gets more and more the more you face tank it, obviously, right? So, um, even if somebody like somebody has 450,000 skill power, it still would like should not one shot you if you have 20% EDR and a complete glass cannon build. So the only time it's going to one shot you is over that amount of skill power. Now I have had some builds sent to me that shows that you can get like 600,000 skill power, which I'm not sure why you would do that. That build is absolutely terrible. Um, but there are people out there that do that and then throw, you know, one shot sticky bomb. Um, and then they show what I have no idea, but some people use that and then they throw one hit Seeker Minds and they think they're like super funny or something, even though they probably get like, you know, <laughs> half the amount of kills and they get deaths. But, um, so yeah, in this video, I'm going to give you guys some tips since uh, I was in this last stand match and I think almost their entire team was using Seeker Minds. You're going to see a lot of my teammates dying, but, uh, if you notice, I only end up dying to a Seeker Mine, I think one time and I was going to die anyways. Now, um, here's some tips that you guys can use in order to combat the Seeker Mine users. Now, in theory, if the Seeker Mines were OP, then this team that we were playing against should have won the game hands down since they were all using Seeker Mine skill power builds, correct? But we ended up slaughtering them because we just outplayed them. Simple as that. So here are the tips that you can have towards Seeker Mines and, and kind of dodge them all together. That's the idea. On this build, I'm running zero exotic damage resilience. Usually, I run 20% on my mask and on my chest piece, but recently I've been running skill haste and I think skill power on my mask or crit chance. I think it's actually crit chance. Now, how am I dying such a small amount to these Seeker Mines? Because... I know how to dodge them, I know how the AOE works, I have a headset and I listen to where things are going on. Now, I've had this, uh, and, and I, I noticed that this is kind of more common with console players, I've heard a lot of people say, well, Seeker Minds are broken on console, uh, not PC, and I think the reason is, is because a lot of console players don't use headsets, they play, you know, kind of just sitting back, chilling on the couch, and they play, you know, sound through their speakers, they don't have surround sound, that kind of thing. So so you're not going to be able to hear where Seeker Minds are coming from, and a lot of people have also said that it's, you know, you can barely uh, ever see the Seeker Minds through walls, so you kind of have to listen to where the Seeker Minds are coming from. Well, that's not actually actually a glitch. I learned um, that the Concealment Pulse, or the Scrambler Pulse, can actually hide you from seeing seeker mines through walls so for example someone throws down a seeker you see that little red indication on your hud saying you know there's a seeker mine coming for you but if someone on their team or that person not sure why they would be running a seeker impulse if somebody uses the conceal pulse it will actually not show that seeker mine through the wall anymore same thing with turrets same thing with you know sticky bombs and smart cover and all of the skills in general 
So it's actually not a bug. It's because of people using the conceal. You gotta remember in Last Stand, there's eight people running around, so at least someone is gonna have conceal up all the time. So I think this is the root to the problem that a lot of console players are having and some PC players too. Maybe you don't use a surround sound headset, which obviously, you know, I don't think you should have to use a surround sound headset, but the way that Last Stand is built, that's just kind of what you have to do. You can see there's a lot of situations where I shoot the Seeker Mines and just blow them up and then and they don't kill anybody which is the ideal situation but sometimes you kind of just have to play for yourself and roll past them now it may seem ass backwards to want to roll towards the seeker mines but that's exactly how you counter seeker mines you want to roll in the exact direction of where they're coming remember you're dealing with ai you're not dealing with a player controlled skill so you can use that to your advantage and assume that the AI is going to go directly for you. It's going to track where you are, which means you can roll in a straight direction right past them. Now you did see there that my heal was bugged. The reason for that is because on the server, I'm assuming it was, you know, kind of thinking that I was on fire, but on my client, I wasn't on fire. So when I was spamming my heal, it wasn't working. So that was a bit frustrating. I have noticed that the seeker mind uh, burn timer is broke. There's no way that you're supposed to be burning for as long as you do. They should definitely take a look at that for 1.7 because there is something weird there. Um, especially with how the way, you know, resistance works now, it's time based. There's something definitely broken with the seeker minds because I've had uh, seeker minds like catch me on fire for like 10 seconds before, which is absolutely insane. My guy will sit there and he'll just pat himself down like continuously and it just does not make sense so that is one thing i will agree that is kind of broken on the seeker minds but with them removing stagger it is so incredibly easy just to roll past these minds guys like i said you're dealing with artificial intelligence you are not dealing with a player controlled skill so make sure to use that to your advantage when you see a seeker mind rolling at you roll into the seeker mine and pass the aoe don't forget the seeker mine pops it shoots a cone of aoe and then after it explodes it puts like five little pockets of aoe around on the ground well the idea is if you roll towards it and you run roll past all that area of effect then you're not ever going to be hit by it and you can see sometimes you don't even have to roll you can just run at them i roll just in case so that you know it doesn't you know it gives me a little bit more of an advantage when i come out of the roll because i usually it won't hit me but you will notice a couple of situations where um i don't even roll i just run right past that cone that i was talking about now some of you guys may be thinking well you know if you have to roll towards somebody then that's going to be a problem because they're just going to kill you actually that's not true because uh, according to what everyone's saying about how much skill power it takes for you to actually have one-shot Seeker Mines, either A, somebody's going to be using Seeker Mines that aren't strong enough to one-shot and are just overall weak anyways, or B, you're going to have people that are stacking tons of skill power, and if that's the case, you're going to be able to roll into them because you're not going to take any damage anyways. They have no firearms. They're all electronics builds. They're not going to have damage talents. They're not going to have any of that stuff. They're most likely running tactician or a hybrid build to output the most amount of skill power possible. And if that is the case, then you will be fine rolling towards them. If anything, it will give you an advantage because after that seeker mind pops, they are no longer a factor. You can push them and you will have two skills and they will have one skill. If you are really nervous about taking too much damage, what you can do is you can pop a heal right when it's about to explode and then push them with overheal and then they're never going to beat you. Like if, it, if, a, if a full electronics build beats you one-on-one, -on -one, then we have bigger problems here than just learning how to dodge Seeker Mind. So that is definitely a huge tip. I know like it, oh, I see a lot of people trying to roll away from Seekers. I see them like backwards away. I see people trying to roll left and right and sometimes that can work and it won't take you know full damage but most of the time you will get hit by them because of the way that the aoe works so guys remember try this try this in a last stand game like go in there and then whenever you see a seeker my rolling towards you don't try to like juke it or anything like that because it might do something funky and it might kind of you know throw you off run directly in a beeline straight at the seeker roll past it and you guys will realize that you will die to seeker minds a lot 
less often. Another thing I want to talk about is the underrated EMP sticky bomb. Now, a lot of people don't really know that this sticky bomb even exists because it is new in 1.6. And uh, the way that the new sticky bomb works is it's an instant explosion. It's not like the regular, you know, BFB where you're you have to shoot it and then it's got like a one second delay. This sticky bomb instantly explodes and it gives, uh, it does no damage, right? So you're not using this for damage. You can see me actually switch to it here in this video to show you guys um, because there were a lot of seekers. So I thought, you know, what would even screw them over more is switching to this EMP sticky. It is so unbelievably good. It's uh, called the disruptor sticky. It's the third one over in the um, sticky bomb mods. Now, why is this skill so good? Well, A, it's got a super short cooldown since it doesn't do damage. So it's got like a, like, since it's used mostly for utility it has a super super short cooldown it does three things it disables everything in the area and if you see in the video it's got a huge radius it's unbelievably large it disables everything in the area that means seeker mines that means smart cover that means you know uh, turrets anything any type of skill in the game that disruptor sticky will disable it now i can't stress enough how easy it is not only to disable like you know seeker mines and stuff like that but to use it as an engagement tool this is such i can't tell you how many times we've been in the dark zone and i've used disruptor sticky and i never see people use it but it's so strong you use it you stun their entire team you know it staggers them on detonation which is even better and it disrupts them which means if you are dealing with a lot of builds like we were in this in this video here we're dealing with a lot of skill power players that have you know huge uh you know skill haste numbers and they're they're dependent they're seeker mind players guys are very one dimensional since they're always using the build because they feel like it's the build that they need to use in order to get an advantage on players they're not good shots and they definitely don't have the experience that a lot of players that use different builds have they're one dimensional you can easily easily make them panic just by disrupting them with your disruptor sticky you hit them they get stunned they're disrupted they can't use any skills and then you push and what are they going to do they have no firearms they have no stamina they have no health on their gear they have nothing what are they going to do pop a med kit okay well they popped a med kit and, and then what they drop a seeker mine you roll past the seeker mine sick like you know what i mean like there's there's so many situations where like people you can make people just waste like med kits because you got to think right if they're popping a med kit just to remove the disruptor uh you know uh, status effect then it means that they're popping med kits when they're full health because don't forget the disruptor sticky doesn't do any damage so that means that you have a huge advantage because you have two skills and you have a med kit and what do they have they already use their seeker you got past their seeker and even if they didn't you know they're disrupted they can't use anything so they have one skill no med kits versus your two skills and one med kit so that is just like I, I can't stress enough guys how good the disruptor sticky is i highly highly suggest it not to mention that it procs things like competent and adept so like for in my example i'm using competent adept responsive on my build so when i pop that uh, emp sticky i instantly have such an huge advantage and that's also for your teams like i saying about you having two skills um even if you're the one using the disruptor sticky, your teammates are at such an advantage because you are disrupting their entire team. Not to mention that you can also shoot it like you saw in the video here where I shot it while I was getting um, the uh, B1. You can shoot it and just leave it sitting there because it is a sticky bomb after all. And most situations you can leave it there and then you know grab or you know use advantage and use corners and then wait for people to go over it and then <laughs> detonate it. it's so strong it's so good and i really think that you guys will be interested now don't forget this also stops immunizers right now in the dark zone um one of the uh the, the most dangerous builds that you guys are seeing is the healer builds the healer builds are so so good currently in the dark zone what people are doing is they're running a full 
healer build and then like uh, uh you know the rest of the team is also running electronics and skill haste and that kind of thing and the one thing that kind of keeps the team alive is that immunizer and disabling that immunizer with your disruptor sticky is so catastrophic to their strategy there's almost nothing they can do you stun their entire team their entire team's disrupted and none of their skills or any of their their deployables are working so I want to make this video to kind of give you guys some tips on how to dodge seekers, how to deal with them, and kind of just give the the spotlight to the disruptor sticky. The disruptor sticky is so underrated, and I honestly think that it's one of the strongest and one of the most game-changing skills that you can use in the game. Don't forget, guys, it's not all about the amount of damage that a skill can do. It's the amount of different situations that you can make use of that skill and seeker mind players are super super one dimensional and i think a lot of you guys are going to be able to use this video to your advantage to hopefully uh kind of spread awareness of how to counter the seeker minds the more people that learn how to counter the seeker minds the less people are going to use them i don't think nerfing them is the is the answer because in the dark zone right now they're completely useless uh they're so easy to dodge good teams don't even run a seeker mine and honestly a seeker mine player can hold the team back a great amount anyways guys thank you so much for watching this video you can see we pretty much stomped this team we beat them by 5k if you enjoyed be sure to drop the video a like let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and i will talk to you guys in the next one take care everybody